Hello and welcome back to Football Daily. With April Fool's Day this Monday, we thought we'd compile a list of 10 unbelievable football facts. Let's get started. 10. Fergie fired for mistreating a woman. Everyone knows about Sir Alex Ferguson's incredible success at Man United. The 13 Premier League trophies, five FA Cups, two Champions Leagues and countless unforgettable moments, the Govan-born manager largely defined football in England between 1986 and 2013. But what people don't realise is that before his trophy-laden tenures at United and Aberdeen, he had a less successful spell in charge of St Mirren between 1974 and 1978, which ended up with Fergie being fired. Prior to that, he converted the Buddies from an average second division side watched by crowds of just over 1,000 in 1974 to first division champions three years later, with an average age of just 19. But amidst interest from Aberdeen at the end of the 1978 campaign, Ferguson was given his P45, with chairman Willie Todd later revealing it was primarily because of a breach of contract relating to Aberdeen's interest. But he was also accused of intimidating behaviour towards his office secretary. He allegedly refused to speak to her for six weeks, confiscated her keys and only communicated with her through her 17-year-old assistant. Subsequently, the industrial tribunal which examined his case of wrongful dismissal concluded that Ferguson was particularly petty and immature towards her. 9. Man United's incredible home record Two years before Fergie took his seat in the Old Trafford dugout, the Red Devils hosted Ipswich in a run-of-the-mill First Division clash. Liverpool were a few weeks away from lifting their third consecutive title, Ipswich were comfortably in mid-table, and Man United under Ron Atkinson were chasing European qualification. United went ahead through Mark Hughes, who was playing his first year of senior football, but threw away their 1-0 lead and ended up losing 2-1, their fourth home defeat that year. But remarkably, in the intermittent 33 and a half seasons covering 675 games, United have never lost another home league game after being ahead at half time. That incredible record formed the bedrock of Ferguson's dynasty, which Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is now attempting to imitate and emulate. OGS's home record at the time of writing of played eight, won five and lost one is impressive, but he's got some way to go to match Fergie's mind-blowing longevity and success. 8. Giuseppe Bergomi's World Cup record One club man Giuseppe Bergomi holds legendary status with the Inter Milan faithful. The Sky Sports Italia pundit dedicated his entire career to the Narazzurri, making 756 appearances for the club over 20 years leaving him second on their all-time appearance list behind Javier Zanetti. The three-time UEFA Cup winner also made 81 appearances for the Italian national side, 12th on their all-time list, and it's for a quirk of fate when representing the Etsuri that Bergami makes our list. Remarkably, despite appearing at four World Cups, the Milan-born defender never appeared in a single qualifying game. Although he had just 55 inter-appearances to his name in 1982, an 18-year-old Bergami was picked as a wildcard by Enzo Berzot. And he ended up playing three games as Italy beat Argentina, Brazil, Poland and West Germany to lift their third World Cup. They were the holders and then the hosts for the next two editions, exempting them from qualifying, and after Italia 90, Bergami's distinguished international career appeared to be drawing to a close. But in 1998, after just two appearances in the previous eight years, Cesar Maldini drafted the 34-year-old into his squad last minute. Four World Cups, not a single qualifier, one unbeatable record. 7. Barcelona's bogey team on paper, Dundee United and Barcelona don't have a lot in common. Barca are five-time La Liga champions with five Champions Leagues to their name and superior head-to-head -head records against two of the most successful sides in European Cup history, Real Madrid and AC Milan. Meanwhile, Dundee United Stadium holds 84,000 fewer people and they haven't won a league title for 36 years. But they can claim to be the only club with a 100% winning record against the Blaugrana. Their first meeting came in 1967 in the Intercity Fairs Cup, an early version of the UEFA Cup, with Dundee winning the first leg 1-0. They were 1-0 down with five minutes to play in the second leg at the Camp Now before two late goals sealed their second consecutive victory. 20 years later, they met in the quarterfinals of the UEFA Cup, with Dundee once again doing the double over a side which included Mark Hughes and Gary Lineker. And amazingly, up until their 7-0 humiliation at the hands of Bayern in 2013, this was the last time Barca lost both legs of a European tie. Four games against Barca, four wins, no one can take that away from them. 6. Yari Lippmann's Longevity 
Arguably the greatest Finnish footballer of all time, Yari Lippmanen reached the pinnacle of the game, managing to turn out for clubs including Ajax, Barcelona and Liverpool. And whilst injuries meant he only once played more than 30 league games in a single campaign out of a possible 23, his undoubted quality still saw him win five league titles and a Champions League, all with Ajax. But while his time at club level was stop-start, his international career is unlikely to be topped. Despite never appearing in a major tournament, he made 137 appearances for his nation, 32 more than the next best Sami Hippier. But the quantity of Lippmanen's caps, whilst impressive, isn't what warrants inclusion. It's the fact that the midfielder is the only player to represent his country across four decades. He made his Eagle Owls debut back in October 1989 against Trinidad and Tobago, and after captaining his side between 1996 and 2008, made his final appearance in January 2010 against South Korea. With players increasingly calling time on their international careers early to prolong their club lifespans, Lippmannen's incredible record looks safe for years to come. 5. Ronaldo or Ronaldinho Having travelled to the US for the 1994 World Cup, 17-year-old Ronaldo Nazario, later known as R9, watched from the sidelines. But come the Atlanta Olympics two years later, he came to the fore, as Brazil won bronze, losing to eventual champions Nigeria in the semi-finals in a 4-3 classic. But if you were scouting for talent that day, you wouldn't have seen the name Ronaldo on R9's back, but instead Ronaldinho, which translates as Little Ronaldo in Portuguese. El Phenomenal was forced to play under that name due to the presence of the more senior Ronaldo Guiaro in the squad. And three years later, when Ronaldo de Assis Moreira made the Selecao squad, he assumed the name Ronaldinho Gaucho. Now the senior Ronaldo in the squad, Nazario became simply known as Ronaldo, and the duo set about redefining what we thought possible on the pitch. 4. Pitodri's Unfortunate Name when the newly established club Aberdeen took possession of the site for their stadium Pitodri in 1891, they found an area previously used to stable police horses and a wider area known as Gallows Marsh. They developed into an innovative club that were the first in Britain to have an entirely all-seated, all-covered stadium in 1978, meaning that they didn't have to spend millions redeveloping their ground after the Taylor Report's rulings in the wake of the Hillsborough disaster. But like the side which has only won one trophy this century, the 23rd seater stadium is badly in need of a revamp. With that in mind, the originally named New Aberdeen Stadium was granted planning permission in January 2018. This will be a new 21,000 seater stadium which is expected to cost upwards of £50 million. And although it will be a massive shame to leave their home for over 120 years, a rebrand wouldn't be the worst idea. After all, Pitodri literally translates in Gaelic to piece of sh something that supporters of rival clubs have never failed to remind Don's fans. 3. Alvin Martin's Crazy Hat Trick Let us take you back to April 1986, when West Ham, managed by John Lyle, were fighting for the title. Ultimately, they would end up finishing third behind Everton and Liverpool, still to this day their best ever league finish. It wasn't a season without difficulties though. Bad weather in the south of England meant just four games were played between Boxing Day and March, meaning that the Hammers were forced to play nine games in April, winning seven of them. And one of those was an 8-1 trouncing of Newcastle. It wasn't just the scoreline that makes this remarkable, or the fact that Alvin Martin, a centre-half who spent his youth playing up front, scored a hat-trick. It was the fact he scored it against three different keepers. Regular mag stopper Martin Thomas had been injured, meaning that Hibernian's David McKellar was drafted in as cover, but he too sustained an injury. Thomas recovered to start the game at Upton Park, conceded a volley by Martin and went off at half-time with the scoreline at 4-0. In the era of one sub, who was rarely a keeper, young defender Chris Headsworth went in goal, but 21 minutes later, he damaged his collarbone, but not before Martin had scored another. Bizarrely, 5'8 England forward Peter Beardsley was chosen as Martin's next victim, and he promptly scored his third and West Ham's eighth from the spot. 2. Bayern Munich, Inter Milan and World Cups Bayern Munich may have won 17 more German titles than anyone else, but their record in Europe leaves a lot to be desired. They haven't reached a Champions League final since 2013 and have only won 50% of the ones they've contested, with only Juventus losing more than their five finals. Inter Milan might not have quite the same domestic pedigree, level on titles with their city rivals and a full 16 Scudettos behind Juve. And while they won back-to-back 
European Cups in 1964 and 1965, it took 45 years and Mourinho for them to finally lift their third and final one. But both clubs do share one incredible record. They have each had a representative in every World Cup final since 1982. Bayern have had 26 finalists in those 10 editions, compared to 16 from Inter. Only three times in 1998 with Djorkaev and Ronaldo against Liza Rizzou, 2006 with Matarazzi and Grosso taking on Sagnol, and last summer with Inter representatives Brozovic and Perisic facing off against Corentin Tolisso, have the Neretzor had more playing staff than Bayern in football's showpiece event. Two historic sides and one record which surely has to run out soon. 1. Lost Dog Saves Man United Man United may be the third richest club in the world, with over £580 million worth of annual revenue and 650 million fans. But what people don't know is that this behemoth nearly never existed were it not for a very helpful dog. At the turn of the 20th century, the club then known as Newton Heath was in a perilous financial state. Then President William Healy was owed £2,500 by the club, a vast sum in those days, and approached the court to issue a winding up order for the money owed to him. At this point, Harry Stafford, the club captain, was sending his St Bernard major around the ground on match days to collect donations for the club. When Newton Heath's winding up order was finally issued, Stafford just about raised enough money to cover the costs of their next game away at Bristol City before returning to Manchester for a four-day fund fundraising event. The story goes that on the fourth day, Major ran away and entered a local pub in which John Henry Davis, the owner of a successful local brewery, was having a drink. After finding his dog, Stafford persuaded Davis to pay off the club's debts, saving them from extinction. Whilst this story is virtually unknown, Major actually had a book written about him, The Dog That Saved Manchester United a fitting reward for a Red Devils hero. That's it, I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. If you have, make sure you hit the like button down below and tell us what you thought in the comment section. And why not check out the video on screen? I'm sure you guys will love it. As always guys, subscribe to the channel and we'll see you later.